A very warm welcome to everyone. I am Manakshi Kimurthy, a mentor with the Tugbuk Shikshan program. It is India's first parent-focused activity-based homeschooling program, and it's aimed to fully equip parents to educate children safely at home with the right approach, activities, toys, a lot of fun games, workshops, and mentoring support for parents. And uh, today joining us is Ms. Mridula Shridhar. She is the co-founder of Credo Early Childhood Solutions. We're just waiting for her to join us. Hello, Mridula. A very warm Hi. welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, <laughs> some tech difficulties we faced earlier. Uh, yeah, not, not very savvy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Super. So, uh, Mridula, if you could tell us a little about uh, Credo and uh, the association with Tugbug. Sure. So, I'll just give a quick brief uh, about Credo. We've been in the early education space now for over 20 years, and we've been working with children between the age of 2 and 6 for uh, more than two decades now, uh, largely in the space of um, uh, activity-based learning. So, we started as suppliers, went into early education research, ran our own school for several years, and now we support over 1,500 women entrepreneurs across the country uh, to make sure that they run their school in a way that's healthy for the child and uh, in a very simplistic manner and what suits the child to learn better. So that's really the Bean Credo's journey in a nutshell. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I'm sure uh, a lot of us will learn a lot from the discussion today. So... Uh, Nidana, a question that we are constantly asked uh, by parents is that, first of all, what is activity-based learning? And is this activity-forward approach uh, a better method to teach children at home and how? Yeah. So, so uh, activity-based learning is a very, um, you know, it's a, it sounds complicated and simple at the same time. So people often uh, mistake how it has to be implemented. Uh, there is a lot of play elements, but there's a lot of learning elements as well, and it's sort of a combination of a lot of uh, things, which when put together in a simple way benefits the child the most. So to give you a simple example, um, if we were to teach the child big and small, and you show um, you know, a glass full of big water and a glass full of, and an empty glass, uh, and ask the child to pour water from the bigger glass to the smaller glass, uh, within about three attempts, the child will figure that there's one glass that has more water and one which has less which is a very simple physics or science concept, which you would have otherwise taken ages to teach via a book or a picture to show a big glass and a small glass. So if as simple as that, when you do activities first and then you bring about uh, the definition that this is big and this is small in a theoretical manner, then the child is um, absolutely absorbs it much better. And there's clarity. There is no need to now explain what is big. This is what we define as big or small. So the theoretical elements get cut down and the child gets straight to the point on their own. And it's really about discovery-based learning. So every time the child discovers learning rather than um, being taught, uh, it stays so much longer with the child. Activity-based learning, of course, is also about using your hands a lot. And any learning that sort of comes about using your hands and especially your fingers, um, it stays with you much longer. It's it's the simple law of life. So there's nothing to explain in that. The more you use your hands, the better you learn. I completely agree. I completely agree. And it's it's amazing to see that a lot of parents are finding so much of value with this this approach, and they are embracing it so well. Uh, so, Mridula, uh, why do you think a program like Shikshan uh, is helpful for parents in the present scenario? Yeah. So this year has thrown up so many surprises um, as well as so many opportunities as well. And while we were all struggling in the beginning of this year to wonder how the year is going to go by and will children learn at all, it's been a very difficult year for parents to make these choices. Um, even should the schools open, should we petition for it to sh stay shut? Will we be able to manage children at home and so on? Uh, but um, uh, I think uh, at home there's a lot of learning that can happen. And it happens randomly. Children at between the age of two and six are very absorbent. So they soak in everything that happens around them. 
uh but what happens is that when the learning is unstructured um you're not focused on it and with parents having so many other things to do at home it becomes difficult to keep that as the mainstream as the learning of the child being top of the mind every day which is why you need a partner even at home when you want to uh, help your child learn uh, you need a structured learning program like shikshan to um turn to uh only because it gives you everything in a chronological way it gives you things sequentially it helps you understand what comes uh, next and um it helps you put things in perspective sometimes we just know these things but we're not doing them because there's nobody telling us do this at the right time so it helps to have a reminder it helps to have somebody else tracking your program and i know shikshan has um, you know jumped in with a lot of enthusiasm to make parents life easier if, you know the, most of all and has the child learn at the same time and there has to be somebody constantly thinking about this hence i think it's um, you know it's very essential for parents um children will learn any which way but if you want the child to learn really well and you want to achieve like 70 to 80% of your learning goals then it's always advisable to have the doctor by your side which is what i think uh, the role that children plays yes uh, i completely agree with you and there are so many parents who are reaching out who are reaching out who are researching who are spending so much of time trying to look for the right solution for themselves and their kids and uh, yes that's what shikshan is trying to do but i think the first question that comes up to every parent's mind is uh, what should i teach my child uh, which are the developmental areas that uh, you know i should be working on with my child in early years and what should i cover how much is too much and how much is too less yeah. kind of a thing so there's never too much for us uh, there's only always too less the sky is the limit as far as children go and i think um, with the uh, time passing by as we all get more aware of what are the things that children need to learn we're also a lot of uh, i would say educated parents are moving away from pressurizing their children too much but there's a small difference between pressure and challenge and that's something we often forget in early years um you know when a child jumps from the first step nobody has to tell the child aap abhi upar chadh ke wahan se kudo nobody tells the child things like that the child automatically goes to the next higher step and starts jumping from there because the children love challenges uh, i think uh, the developmental areas that are very very critical in early years and you must touch on these are uh, literacy numeracy uh, fine motor skills sensorial and so on these are the fundamentals that every child must be exposed to because this completely changes the way children think and uh, it's it's very simple the more you expose children to the right things between the age of 2 and 6 uh, the longer uh, the child will stay with that i mean things that are not introduced but between 2 and 6 is something the child will find very difficult to process later on in life so this is what we call the use it or lose it policy in a way So the more you use any sense or any type of learning it stays with you for life between the age of 2 and 6 and hence it's very important to introduce the right kind of numeracy literacy skills uh why are play, play why are activity based learning why are a lot of other tools which can be supplementary learning like art and craft and drama and so on um all of these put together when you do things right below the age of 6 then life becomes very easy for the child hence for from 6 onwards yes i i do agree these are certain areas uh, that need to be touched upon which need to be covered especially in the sensitive periods uh, of early years so uh, rizla what about the learning environment at home how can a parent create a really good enriching learning environment at home for the child what does a parent need to do yeah so uh, the rules are very simple keep it simple is the basic rule so a no clutter keep it clean um, have organized corner in your house which is clean has good amount of ventilation and nothing much around it so you don't need to change your entire home and your household for the child but uh, one corner definitely i think your child deserves and that needs to be the child special corner and to set up this corner have do not have too many things over there it's very very uh, disturbing to the children to have a over painted background or overly colorful background something simple pleasant uh, easy to access i think one of the things that parents must have is a small little shelf which is open rather than have things shut in a cupboard it just looks so much more inviting when you have the child looking at things hey i like that let me go and play with it rather than you telling the child 
why don't you go and play with this toy so when you lay it out open um on a just a maybe even a simple bench or a shelf whatever it is that you can manage at home uh, the child feels compelled to go pick it up and start playing with it and when children do things out of their own choice it makes so much more difference than um you know you telling the child why don't you try this so it has to be at home it has to be uh, not instructional but something that comes out of choice and um, the child should come and probably ask the parent you know can you show me what this does and that's so much more enriching for the child when the process of learning happens by the child and not by the parent so these are pretty much the simple things where keep it clean don't keep too many toys just rotate things don't keep everything that you have at the same time have a few things in place which are uh, necessary like a stationery or uh, you know your pencil eraser and things like that because those are things that uh, the child doesn't need to come and ask you can i have this can i have that you know it, it needs to be available but keep the rest of the home as it is your dining table doesn't need to be pushed to a corner your sofa doesn't need to be pushed to a corner it has to be where it is because the child needs to navigate the home as well i agree with you uh, i mean right now none of us were prepared uh, for the pandemic definitely and uh, transforming your entire house into a school is definitely not possible so i think very creative ways we need to you know come up with uh, so what is the role of a parent when executing activity based uh, learning at home for a child and isn't it a difficult method for a parent to use uh, to teach a child at home yeah so activity based learning one of the you know biggest hurdles for it even in school and at home has always been oh my god is this difficult will i have to put away things will i have to do a lot of things it's quite the contrary activity based learning is one of the most uh, i think least intrusive ways of learning there's the least amount of work to do for the parent what the parent definitely has to do with activity based learning is to introduce it right the first time the first time you show the child how to play with the toy or how to handle it or how to put it back in its shelf that's critical and that's non negotiable but once you have done that that's it you you shown the child the road and the child is now free to run on the road not just walk but the child will gallop along you know picking up things and uh, playing with the toys uh, as 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 if they come uh, along the way um it, this word teach is something that needs to go out of our dictionary uh, we are here to help the child learn we're not here to teach children we don't want to make teachers out of parents in fact we don't want to make teachers out of even teachers at schools uh, what we want to do is to make them guides to facilitate learning and um, the child is perfectly capable of learning on its own as long as the right tools are there and the right guidance is there so the right guidelines are very important and i think that's the most important role parents have to play just show them nicely slowly methodically in a way that the child will understand the first couple of times you show what to do with the game and then completely it's a child's prerogative to use the toy and they will use it well we've had very few instances of children misusing if shown right the first way and um never tell the child go do this you know instructionally uh, would you like to work with your materials would you like to work with this toy it always gives the child a sense of joy to you hear the word work and feel important and responsible rather than just say why don't you go play with your toys and let me finish my work and join you you know that that sort of takes away the sense of joy from the child so it's the way your language is and it's the way you show that all a parent needs to do you don't need to become a full time teacher at home Yes uh Rudra I quite uh, agree with you and especially when you said that if you show the child the you know right way of handling a toy or doing a certain activity with the toy then children you know they do it and there's hardly ever when they go wrong but uh where can a parent learn of how you know in terms of how to introduce the toy the right way first time whereas i mean when it comes to teachers we are trained to do all these things but where do parents get all this knowledge from yes um so i i think uh, one of the programs that we are running with uh, shiksha and of course has play based learning at its base and it's a question that we are often asked saying what should i do in the house and how should i do it uh, i think it's very important and um, you know to have a partner like shiksha on your side i think that's the role again of the 
uh, consultant that you play to the parents, uh, which is the role you're really playing beautifully to tell the parents how you are going to work with your children at home. Uh, we have a lot of video-based instructions and parents don't need to become very technical saying, you know, I didn't do this perfectly the way you told me. That's absolutely fine. It's your style. It's your way. All you need to do is follow the high-level guidelines and not push children too much. At the same time, not, you know, sort of pressurize them to work with what you want them to work with. Give them a little bit of freedom and uh, just uh, instinctively, just the way a mother takes to a newborn, I think parents can take to learning. As long as you're not pressured by, I need to teach my child, my child doesn't know this, your child will learn. Just give him a little space, uh, give her a little time and I think children are born to learn. Yes. Uh, definitely, I mean that's how we we are seeing a lot of our children and also parents of the Shikshan community really blossoming right now and enjoying the entire process. Uh, so, Mridula, uh, what kind of instructional materials and resources uh, does a parent need to do activity-based learning at home? How much of it do they need? Uh, so, I think uh, having the right tools is very very important. Look, there can be so many ways of learning uh, via activity-based learning. But if we need to make it less cumbersome, um, you know, you can make clay at home, but if you, you know, have a box of clay at home, it cuts down the parents' uh, time investment into it so much, which can be then invested into playing with the child, because you are, you do have a limited amount of time at home, and the child has unlimited energy, so you need to somewhere balance the two, and uh, you need to keep offering new things, so... Um, you know, the, a whole list of um, materials which can be multi-purpose and used often enough to key, catch the child's fancy. That's very, very important. Um, what you need to have otherwise are basics like your colors and your stationery and, you know, paper, uh, even newspaper, rough paper, a lot of things that can be recycled from what you have at home. Don't need to make it like I need to go and buy these things for my child. But I think for activity-based learning to achieve its objectives, uh, which is something we do with our uh, Practivity Toy Box, which Shikshan is also using, uh, there is a defined set of objectives that children must meet. And those shouldn't be negotiated on. You need to have counting done at a certain time. You need to have addition introduced at a certain time. And uh, having the right tools to introduce addition, addition can be done in a million different ways. But to have the right tool to introduce addition so that you don't have to teach, but yet the child can learn, that's very important. And hence, uh, which is why uh, we typically say it's not just a bunch of random toys that you need to have at home. There needs to be a structured set of toys that you need to have at home. Um, I think um, we've been working for years with schools, and this is one of the difficulties even school space. It's not just the parents saying, what should I have in my school? And they randomly buy things from the market. And everybody, everything has a learning value. There's nothing that doesn't have a learning value. But does it justify what you bought? Does it have sufficient learning value? Is it interesting enough to the children? This is the kind of research that we've been involved in for 20 years. And that's the kind of play-based learning that we've sort of brought out in our program this year. And um, uh, I would just maybe take this opportunity to also mention, uh, we've partnered with very few people over the years. I think Shikshan is one of the very few programs that uh, we opted to partner with because there was a lot of synergy in understanding that, yes, activity-based learning via play is the right way of doing things. So um, it is important for parents to identify the right partner, not just keep the child engaged. Engagement is different. Learning is different. So yes, you can keep your child engaged so that the mind is occupied. But if you can offer learning with that, without too much effort at home, that would be my ideal solution for me to work with my children. Yes, um, I completely agree. And I can see so many parents who are extremely happy uh, being in the program, who found you know a lot of new learning, and also they are finding that their bonding with their kids are becoming, I mean, that's becoming stronger. That bond is becoming stronger because they are spending a lot of qualitative, quality and fun time with them while learning. So, um, Ridula, I think we have some questions from our, from our audience. Yes. If anybody has questions, please drop them in the comments and we'll be taking all of them now. So I think, yeah, while we take the questions, I think one of the other things that I would just like to mention to parents is when you're doing learning at home, 
um, one of the reasons we insist on a structured learning program, whether it's at school or at home, is uh, children need to, you know, gradually increment. That's what we call an incrementally challenging program. Uh, they need to go from step one to step two to step three, not step one and today I'll do step ten and then step nine in between. Uh, that confuses children. So having a program that's simple, um, that you know is taken gradually from 2 plus 3 to 3 plus 4 to 4 plus 5, uh, that makes life easy for you as well as for the child and that's really why you need, you know, sort of a program to manage at home. Yes, um, yes, Mirla. So one question that we've uh, received is that uh, is homeschooling the right way to go for me uh, and my child? I'm very concerned. And uh, I don't know if uh, regular schooling is better or homeschooling. What would you suggest? I, I don't think we have an option this year. Uh, look, social learning is very important. I think it's very, very important for children to play with other children. That is the element we are going to be missing this year. However, your intellectual learning, that doesn't need to suffer. Just because the socio-emotional component is out, uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot have intellectual learning. Uh, also, I think um, with a program like Shikshan, I think you do have some group, um, you know, group activities and things like that. That's a little bit of social-emotional that we can do this year. It's not the same thing as being in a park with other children. Uh, but since you can't be in a park or you can't be in school and learn together with other children, I think that's the ne next best thing that we can have. Uh, I think a lot of learning can happen at home. Uh, what we will miss this year is peer learning, um, which we can only do digitally and online. And hopefully going forward, I still think there's a lot of scope for learning at home, even in the years going ahead. Um, maybe we'll, you know, even may end up with a blended model where you have school and home learning parallelly happening. We don't know really how the scenario is going to turn. Uh, so I am a staunch believer of children must learn with other children also. But whatever we can manage this year, I think that's the best thing to happen is to somehow get a little bit of that via programs like Shikshan. Yes, yes, I agree. So another question that we have is, how can I keep my child away from phone and television? This is a yeah, very frequently asked question. <laughs> yeah, so uh, absolutely. Um, See, while, while I think technology is, is the way forward in terms of learning in higher classes, I think uh, if you want to build better scientists and better engineers in the future, better thinkers, better artists, I think below the age of six, it is very important to keep, um, if not completely away, minimize your screen time. And I think that can be done with play. Uh, I think one of the things that we've often seen again is children are going to emulate what they see at home. So, um, you know, you need to reduce your screen time a little bit to make sure your, you know, child is not looking at you and saying, I want to do what Papa does or Mama does, because if that's the way it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. Having said that, I know it's very challenging in today's day and um, age to tell parents to cut down screen time because they're logged in and they're working from home. I don't think we have an option. So if you can get it across to the child, like this is my work, and have the child's activity corner next to your workstation and they say, you do your work and I'm doing my work, not you go play and I'm, I'm on my laptop. It's your language. I think that cuts down significantly the screen time for the child saying, I'm doing something important too and give the child the respect the child deserves. Uh, when the child says, I'm busy and the child is doing nothing as per you, uh, you can't just disturb the child and say, hey, but you're doing nothing. You don't know what the child is thinking. You don't know what the child is absorbed in. And for the child, that is work. What the child, maybe the child is staring paper, but that is work for the child. So you can't disturb the child when the child is staring paper saying, you know, come and help me. So if you can use the right language and help the child understand what the child is doing is very important and responsible, I think children will cut down screen time on their own. Also, the kind of stories that you uh, tell children at home, I think they need to be a little realistic. Um, we as adults love our fantasy tales, our fairy tales, our, uh, you know, uh, stories of even mythology for that matter. But if we overdo that component at home, children tend to get not appreciate the real world. So uh, that's something that we, you know, we give a lot of importance to even in uh, early years. The kind of stories, the grandmother's tales need not be fairy tales if you can tell them. There was a beautiful mountain or there's a lovely house where there's a lovely boy staying here and this is 
you know the mother gave him chapatis to eat and make that sound exciting the child starts appreciating the real world rather than uh, ideological technological world and get you know doesn't get caught as much in it learns to appreciate the world around i think that's very important for children thank you mrithula that's uh, i mean that was really eye opening actually because a lot of us struggle with the same issues and definitely the kind of language we use around our children and how we you know look at them in terms of whatever they are doing no ju- judgments to be done and no such values to be attached is it's very important another question that we have is uh so somebody's asked is scolding sometimes good like when my child is scribbling on the wall so you need to define your parameters very clearly and this is a very common problem where we are confused we don't know whether scribbling on the wall is it's not that the child is at fault we don't know whether scribbling is good or bad and that's the one that's going to cause the most problem because you don't know you be clear are you okay with it or are you not okay with it and if you're okay with it don't ever say anything if you've defined your boundaries as saying no this is not acceptable to me scribbling is not okay then you have to have a place where your child can scribble and if you've shown the child a place to scribble if there's a let's say a board or a slate or whatever you've stuck on the wall or stick a newspaper in the corner which can be replenished whenever the child has finished uh, scribbling and say hey here's your scribbling corner once the child has shown the right tool the child will always use it uh i would say scolding but i would definitely say firmness is very important but for firmness to be in place clarity is very important so you need to be very clear this is right and this is wrong you can't say aaj mood acha nahi hai today scribbling is not okay and yesterday it was fine so you need to be very clear that scribbling is not okay then you have to have a corner where the child can do it right in uh as a parent if you feel it's okay hey let the child scribble and i'll get it repainted then absolutely the child is at a stage where the child is exploring and if you've given the freedom to explore then the child will explore so it depends on the uh, guidelines that you lay out for the child um simple things at home like having a step stool at the wash basin so that the child doesn't call you to wash hands um is something that you can do at home which means you're making the child independent and the more independent you make your child the bigger better decision maker the child is going to be so you need to define your boundary and be firm there's nothing wrong with firmness and children understand no very very well they also understand yes very well be clear when you're saying yes and when you're saying no and there's no need to scold and there's no need to say good job also often enough the child knows when the child has done a good job so we are firm believers of no rewards and no punishments it works very well with young children it's only as you get older that you need the bribing and the punishments to start coming in i don't think children below 6 need it yes um definitely it is a problem that every indian household is facing right now so uh mridula uh, so there's another question uh so it says that my child is the only child uh, and how do i deal with his loneliness yeah um you have to be the peer i think sometimes you have to become a child uh, just for this year because children do need the um you know a little bit of uh, madness and silliness in their lives and sometimes you have to play the role especially considering they don't have their peers around this time um if if there is a you know neighbor who the child has been interacting with and it's safe for you to interact with that it's great to have at least that one person to share things with for children and we must take the time out to try and encourage that if that's not happening then you have to play that role uh, i don't think there's any other option this year it's otherwise in a typical year school has enough opportunities to have that um, you know have that peer learning and the peer interactions happening uh, i think today again digital is the only way to go right now if there is no other option then yeah i mean you have your digital peer group which are important where children can sort of interact with each other uh but at the age of 3 we also need to remember children are um, not if they are four plus they are okay to go out and invite people to interact with them online less than four children are still at the parallel play age where i am doing my thing you are doing your thing but we just need to sit together that's the element we're missing this year i think that's where you have to play the role where say i'm going to play this you play that but let's just sit together and work together um uh, and i think uh, the parent is the only source of peer learning for this year in fact mridula one of the most beautiful things that we saw especially in the shikshan online workshops the fun workshops was that 
you know very young kids uh, coming together in small groups and now they form these bonds and they look forward to seeing each other in every fun session and you know that interaction with the anchors the anchors who do these workshops with children and then their you know uh, interactions amongst each other is amazing you know it's like they get that breather that mini right. breather that breather twice a week that's amazing so and that yeah. you have overcome this barrier in a time like this is so important especially in a time like this when all of us are weighed down and we just don't have any other source of social interaction uh, i'm so glad children have found a way to have that a uh, median instruction with with the teacher of the online world as well as with the peers that they are part of the social group of that that's amazing yes uh, so mrudula just one last question uh, we are running out of time but yeah. we'll take up this one last question so somebody has asked uh, us that uh, my children do not sit to eat how can i make them sit in one place and have them eat um uh, you just need to learn to say no it's just as simple as that the more you accommodate their request the less your children are going to sit and uh, we i think um india as a society we're very over anxious to feed our children um even if the children don't have you know uh, two meals consecutively it's fine because it's very important that the child learns to sit down and eat on their own how long are you going to be able to run behind the child and somehow take him to the park and you know sort of put a few morsels in the mouth which the child is also not enjoying at the end of the day and let the child come and ask when they are hungry do not feed children because it's you know your stomach says it's time for lunch let them come and ask sometimes children do and right now there's no energy to expend they're not running around all over the park or things like that so uh it is going to be you know there is going to be a lack of routine even for the child's digestive system so wait for the child to get hungry and when the child gets hungry give the child very little let the child ask for more do not overload the plate i think when we were running school we would often have this program a problem where children come with bhara hua dabbas and then it's very difficult i know as parents we we are anxious for them to have their carrots and their peas but there's a limit to how much they can eat even this much is sufficient it's enough for their nutritional needs and if the child wants more the child will ask for it which is the best thing that can happen saying till you sit on the table you get your food if you get up from the table there's no food available i think it's very important to get this habit in early in life yes uh, in fact nidula we have such discussions so frequently with our parents especially in our mentoring sessions the kind of uh, you know issues that get addressed that get discussed which might seem very normal when we talk about them on public forums but which are very important to parents which yes. are very important to children and at times parents don't get the right guidance they don't know who yes. to go and get it addressed i mean in school teachers have principals vice principals academic counselors there's so much of support out there whereas yes. parents that is missing and yeah yeah i to- think uh, yeah i think with nuclear families on the rise so much it's uh and our habits changing so much i think new routines have to be found and uh, yeah we have to rely on specialists sometimes to get that information and it helps to know in a group like shikshan if there's another parent facing the same problem you at least know you're not alone in this whole space and it can be very very stressful for parents saying am i doing the right thing am i giving sufficient food am i you know doing the right amount of learning there are so many doubts and self doubts i think it's uh, time for parents to relax a little bit and say you're the best parent no matter what if your child wants more your child will ask you if your child likes to learn and you've done it right your child will learn don't don't feel upset that is my child learning i don't know what's happening but it's important to track uh, i think that's another thing that we've emphasized a lot with shikshan as well saying what you have to do is to make sure you are tracking the child's learning uh not by teaching more and saying hey the child didn't get addition so i'll do 10 more sums no but it's important for the parent or and for the teacher to know the child is progressing meeting the right milestones at the right time eating the right food so um it's literally a milestone tracker that you have to maintain and i think uh, that's what a structured learning program does at the bottom line it helps you track it helps you assess it helps you find the pits before you know uh things are too late and then you can have the right solutions at the right time um i think that's why it's very important to have uh, as i said the doctor by your side yes 
um mridula thank you thank you so much uh, this uh, was so enriching this discussion and i hope our audiences they enjoyed this uh, they got a lot of takeaways from it if you have any further questions our uh, handle name uh, tugbug tugbug is right there uh, in the comments please uh, drop a dm if you have any questions you want to know more about the shikshan program you want a free counseling session with us please drop a dm uh, to us and our team will get in touch with you and thank you so much mithla for taking out the time yeah This thank you and started. apologies for all the technical glitches i i hope we get to do this again thank thank you fab india for having us here and it's been a pleasure thank you have a great thank day you. go ahead thank you bye bye bye